Substitution is a trick to rewrite complicated integrals in a simpler form. Substitution is very powerful. With uh, correct substitutions, it is possible to compute very complicated integrals easily. Finding this correct substitution, however, may be uh, difficult. Hello everybody, I am Mika Seppele. In this video I explain how substitution works and I show some examples about how to find substitutions to compute integrals. An antiderivative or an indefinite integral of a function is by definition an other function whose derivative is that given function. Therefore integration is a reverse operation to differentiation. And this means that any table of derivatives of functions gives immediately also a table of antiderivatives. Namely, each differentiation rule provides a rule to find an antiderivative. We know that the derivative of sine is cosine, and this means that sine is an antiderivative of cosine. And now we must add constant of integration to get all antiderivatives of cosine. And therefore, we have that antiderivatives of the function cosine of x dx are sine of x plus a constant of integration, which constant of integration c can be freely chosen. Since differentiation rules can be reversed to get integration rules, we get immediately a bunch of formulas for integrals or antiderivatives. In the following formula, I have left uh, the constant of integration out just to save space. The constant of integration has to be added mentally to each formula. So we have, for example, that antiderivative of the function x to the power p is x to the power p plus 1 divided by p plus 1, assuming that p is different from negative 1. Antiderivative of 1 over x is log of absolute value of x. Antiderivative of sine is negative cosine. Antiderivative of cosine is sine. Antiderivative of 1 divided by cosine squared is tangent. And antiderivative of 1 divided by square root 1 minus x squared is arc sine of x. This all come from the differentiation rules for these particular functions. In the same way, we have that antiderivative of e to the power x equals e to the power x, or more generally, antiderivative of a general exponential function a to the power x is a to the power x divided by natural logarithm of a. Here we assume that a is positive and that a is different from 1. If a is 1, then a to the power x is always 1, an antiderivative of a to the power x dx in that case is simply x. Antiderivative of 1 divided by 1 plus x squared is arctangent of x. And then we have this combination formula, antiderivative of a constant a times a function f plus a constant b times a function g is the same as a times an antiderivative of f plus b times an antiderivative of g. So these multiplicative constants can be taken outside of integration. This list is not complete. Constants of integration have to be added to all these integral formula. They were left out simply to save space in this presentation. We can extend the scope of these rules for integration, that is, these tables of integrals, greatly by introducing rewriting methods for integrals. The idea here is that we take a somewhat complicated integral and we rewrite it in a form in which its value can be read from this table of integrals. And the rewriting methods, method that we discuss here is called substitution. It all starts with chain rule for differentiation. The chain rule says that 
the derivative of f composed with g evaluated at x is f prime at g of x times g prime of x. This is a general rule for differentiation and just like rules for derivatives of special functions gave rules for antiderivatives of other special functions, also this chain rule for differentiation gives a rule for integration. So the chain rule says that ddx of f at g of x is f prime at g of x times g prime at x. Now we may integrate both sides of this equation. Now integral of the function ddx f at g of x is of course f at g of x because int integration is reverse to differentiation. And therefore this chain rule implies that integral of f prime at g of x times g prime at x dx equals f at g of x plus constant of integration. The substitution rule is customarily written as integral of f evaluated at g of x times g prime of x dx equals integral of f at u du where u equals g of x and du is g prime of x dx. So du has been computed simply by differentiating the formula for u. The idea here is that we may be able to find a substitution u equals g of x such that this complicated integral f at g of x times g prime of x dx can be expressed as an integral of f at u du, which latter integral possibly can be computed simply by looking at the table of integrals. If we can find such a substitution u equals g of x, then we are basically done. Finding this substitution, however, is often difficult and requires some experiment. The substitution rule is that integral of f at g of x times g prime of x dx equals integral of f at u du where u equals g of x du equals g prime of x dx. Now let us take some examples about the use of this rule. As the first example let us compute the integral of e to the 2 times x dx. Here the substitution that we need to use equals u equals 2 times x. Then we compute du simply by differentiating. So du equals 2 times dx and therefore dx equals du divided by 2. And now we substitute. Integral of e to the 2 times x dx becomes integral of e to the u times du divided by 2. This du divided by 2 can be written as 1 half times du and this 1 half comes out of integration. Therefore, this is really 1 half times integral of e to the power u du. This is easy to compute. We get 1 half of e to the power u plus constant of integration. So we can write this in the form e to the power u divided by 2 plus c. And therefore our answer is that integral of e to the 2 times x dx equals e to the 2 times x divided by 2 plus the constant of integration. In this computation of this integral of e to the 2 times x dx, we substituted u equals 2 times x and then du equals 2 times dx and therefore dx equals du divided by 2. So we computed du by straightforward differentiation of the expression for u. That is always easy to do. The difficult part is to find the correct substitution that works and that yields a simpler integral than the original one. In this case, the integration was straightforward and easy and the substitution that needs to be used is almost obvious. 
In this example, we use integration by substitution to compute the integral of 2 times x e to x squared dx. And we do that by the substitution u equals x squared. Then du equals 2 times x dx simply by differentiation. And the integral of 2 times x e to the x squared dx is of course the same as the integral of e to the x squared times 2 times x times dx. Therefore, this integral 2 times x e to the x squared dx becomes simply integral of e to the u du after this substitution. And this last integral is easily computed by the table of integrals. It is simply e to the u plus constant of integration. Therefore, our answer is that integral of 2 times x e to the x squared dx equals e to the x squared plus the constant of integration. And here in this computation, we substituted u equals x squared. And that was suggested by the fact that the derivative of x squared, that is 2 times x, is a factor of the integrand. Therefore, it was natural and obvious choice to use the substitution u equals x squared. Choosing the substitution may be tricky. Let us consider the integral of square root of x minus 1 divided by x dx. Here the temptation that almost everybody uses when first trying to compute this integral is to substitute u equals x minus 1. If one does that, then x equals u plus 1, and dx is simply du, and one gets that the integral of square root of x minus 1 divided by x dx equals integral of square root of u divided by u plus 1 du. Now, this latter integral, square root of u divided by u plus 1 du, is not any easier than the first integral it may be even more difficult to compute. Therefore, this substitution did not lead to a simplification and we have to try something else. So we have to think of a different substitution to use. To compute the integral of square root of x minus 1 divided by x dx, the substitution u equals x minus 1 did not work it led to an integral which was not any simpler than this one. Therefore, a different substitution needs to be used, and we try next u equals square root of x minus 1. Then x equals 1 plus u squared, and by straightforward differentiation we get that dx equals 2 times u du. And therefore, the integral of square root of x minus 1 divided by x dx becomes the integral of u divided by 1 plus u squared times 2 times u du. Now, this integral of u divided by 1 plus u squared times 2 times u du can be written in a simpler way by observing that 2 comes out of integration. So the integral is 2 times integral of u squared divided by 1 plus u squared du. Now, the rational function u squared divided by 1 plus u squared can be simplified by polynomial division. Therefore, we obtain that this original integral, square root of x minus 1 divided by x dx, comes after substitution to the form 2 times integral of 1 minus 1 divided by 1 plus u squared du. The integral of 1 du is simply u. The integral of 1 divided by 1 plus u squared du is arctangent of u. And we still have this constant 2 in front of the integral. And we get that the answer is 2 times u minus 2 times arctangent of u plus the constant of integration. We still have to return back to the original variable. We substitute u equals square root of x minus 1 to get the formula that integral of square root of x minus 1 divided by x dx equals 2 times square root of x minus 1 minus 2 times arctangent of square root of x minus 1 plus the constant of integration. By correct substitutions, 
one may compute very complicated integrals easily. The difficulty lies in finding these correct substitutions. And one rule for this is to look for complicated sub-expressions of the integrand, whose derivative is a factor of the integrand. If there are such sub-expressions in the integrand, then the sub-expressions are good candidates for substitutions that actually will do the job. For example, to compute the integral of cosine of x e to the sine of x dx, one uses the substitution u equals sine of x because its derivative cosine of x is a multiplicative factor in the integrand, and therefore this substitution works in this particular case. If a substitution does not lead to a simplification of the integral, then one simply must try a different substitution. Unfortunately, there are no clear rules that could be always applied. One must use trial and failure, and that may lead to finding the correct substitution eventually. Good luck in doing that.